Obrazovanje je važno. Ovo univerzalno pravilo na širenje vidika pruža nam priliku za bolju budućnost. To je naš pasoš za bolji život. Ali, škole i obrazovne institucije širom svijeta našle su se na prekretnici. Tradicionalni sistemi gube svoju prvobitnu namjenu. Preispituju se osnovna svrha i organizacija školstva. Otkrivaju se vještine i znanja neophodni za 21. vijek. Svijetom se širi novi talas revolucije u obrazovanju. Nastavnici s naprednim idejama iz korijena mijenjaju načine učenja, osporavaju zastarjele metode i suprotstavljaju se postojećem sistemu. Stvaraju prilike koje će promijeniti živote pojedinaca i cijelih zajednica. Being out on the water with a nautical school like this is a pretty great experience. I love being out here. This is a Friday, period three, and look, we're on, we're on the Royal Victoria docks. That in itself makes this school a great place to be, and I think it also inspires us as a school to do things in different and unique ways. We're not bounded by what you would expect, which is a great thing. When I first came to the UK, one thing that did strike me was the amount to which the system for education focuses on exam outcomes. There's a lot of punishment associated with doing badly in exams, it seems. It's often led to really conservative approaches in the classroom in schools. There's a risk-averse process. I think there's much more that we should be doing in classrooms than simply getting ready for exams. Down. Right, listen up, please. Listen up, boys. I told you yesterday that we were going to do, going to continue to learn about a movement in America at the minute, and in some, and actually, there's, there's, they have it's starting in London too, called Black Lives Matter. When people come into the streets in large numbers, that's normally called protest. Okay, and an interesting thing about protest is protests and symbols. Okay, who can tell me what a symbol is? Yes. It's like a logo that tells you what something is. Good. So actually what you see directly can often be different to what you think of, right? This is my first year as a qualified teacher. So this is all I've ever done. And I think it would be difficult for me now to return to, I mean, for lack of a better term, mainstream education. The good thing about the autonomy here is the fact that you can, I can push a certain thing. So I can push the issue of representation. It gives me a framework to do that. Here is a picture of who? Who's that? Oh, no, but who's the most famous person there? It's Beyonce. It's Beyonce, right? And what I want you to do is I want to talk to... I want you to turn to your partner and I want you to ask them, why do you think Beyonce has put all of these names oh, behind her? Talk to the person next to you, go. <laughs> On the national curriculum, it says that teachers are allowed to teach pretty much anything they want. According to the official document that the government put out, we have autonomy to do that. It's, it's just the case that often heads of departments don't put in systems in place in which teachers can um, choose their own texts. What does Trayvon Martin's name stand for in all of the list of these other names? I hope that the kids feel that English is for them. English is, is about learning about the world, it's about critiquing things in society, and it's about how you can stand up to injustice. And that's what I hope the kids feel, and that's why I became an English teacher, and that's what I try and implement on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so I have a 
This is the time when you get to choose who your English teacher is for the next two years. We have a set of beliefs in the English department here about you. The first thing we believe is that you can be trusted, that you are the perfect person to decide where and how and with whom you learn. You decide how hard the program of learning that you think is suitable for you should be. You decide the topic. You decide the style of learning, and then you get on and succeed. We do not want to break you into groups who we think will achieve and groups who we think won't. That is none of our business. At the end of it all, you will all set the same GCSE examinations, and you will all have the same chance of succeeding. But the path you will follow to get there will be very different. I'd like to invite to come forward Mr. Vinikum, who is a new teacher. As well as teaching English, I've always taught drama and media alongside that. I like to bring in those different aspects to my teaching. We're going to be looking at perspectives, different people's perspectives. My texts and my course are all about freedom. What freedom is, what freedom means. I'm interested in the opinions that you bring to these texts, because that's what makes it interesting. If you like exploring social issues, so if you like talking about what we might call big issues such as race and of course poverty, gender, then perhaps my course will be for you. There will be a lot of time for you to air your view and you'll be expected to air your view quite often. These texts that I have selected are hard work and you're going to have to be willing to do some hard work if you want to be in this course. I want you to develop the skill with which you speak. I want you to be confident speaking in class. I want you to broaden the range and depth of your reading so that your understanding is so much greater and hopefully through understanding more, your enjoyment is so much greater. I think I might pick Mr O'Brien. Like, out of all the teachers, he seems like he's like, not down to our level, but he can understand, he understands us more. It, it makes you feel like a grown-up because it makes you have your own choice, your own independence. To be honest, I really don't know who to pick because they're all very good with all their individual ideas and everything. We've invited you to have a conversation with us about the way that we work in the English department. We need to know exactly what it is that you want to see from the teachers and what we can offer you next year. I hadn't realised what I could do. Would it not be better if it was a two-way street, whereas the teacher could also choose to choose the people? We don't think it's our position to choose the student. One of the things that has been proven in research that's going to make the most difference to him in his learning is the teacher. And we feel like it's appropriate for you to have the choice on that. Every teacher has a blog for each class, so you can look at the work that Ruben's being provided with. And each student has their blog, so you can look at your son's work, or you can look at the work of the other students in that class, if you're interested in seeing what others are doing. You can also go onto that same site and find all the information about all the possible badges he could ever want to achieve. Any concerns or um, problems with the idea of us publishing all of this material? I don't know, I just think they're very out there. Maybe that's some older. Um, I don't know, but there's you, you, you sort of a certain feeling that you need to protect them. Yeah. You feel like he was vulnerable for yeah. abuse. Yeah. We think as a school and as educators, it's our job to also inform them about how to be online. And by providing them with a publishing mechanism that is under our 
control, they we can then moderate the choices they're making and be in, be with them in their online world. We're concerned also. important for us, if we ever are invited to do these things, to go together because what we do doesn't just come from one person, it's actually about all of us. It's the students and the teachers all sharing our experiences of what we've created together. The thing is a conference for teachers, so the only people there except for you four will all be teachers. And because we do things so unusually, they're interested to see how that actually works in a school. And, what, and one of the things we agreed was that it's actually more real if the students talk about your point of view than we just say students really like it. Talk about what you want to talk about, really. Because yeah. that's what the people want to hear. For each of you, there might be a different thing. Now, I'm not sure, but Harry, because you've engaged massively with achievement and gone and done your own badges and things like that, yeah. it might be that you're in a position to talk about that. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Our English class, yeah, is different. It's, it's not, it doesn't, uh, even though we use our basic skills that we've learnt, yeah, we use it to do more advanced things like what we're doing right now. You don't normally get to have that conversation. Normally you'll go into a classroom in another school and they will tell you what your program of learning is going to be and that's what you do for the year. I've brought along some people from my team in order to, I think, validate and verify some of the things we're saying. I'm going to talk to you about a whole new system of working that encourages teachers and students to take responsibility for themselves. Our school is not really an ordinary school, yeah? You can um, do your work on your phones and then um, upload it to your blog and then your teachers can see it. Usually, your teacher would be like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Here, just read a book. And to be honest, like, I can read a book at home. I don't, <laughs> don't need to tell me to read a book. Like, I want to continue learning and try and achieve more. We're the only school that I know of that chooses their own English teacher. And I think that, in a way, it matures you and, like, it makes you... Sorry, I'm a bit nervous, but... It makes you more like, like your self-esteem goes up. I think I picked Mr. O'Brien because I saw his course and I think I could relate to it because I live in the inner city. You'll have to believe me when I say this. I haven't said to Foyen, say those things, right? <laughs> like, and so when Foyen says, I think that Mr. O'Brien's course is good for me because it's about the inner city and we talk about social issues, well, I mean, I think that if I was in, when I was in school, I would have liked to have said that about my teacher. And I feel like the fact that we study writers of colour and Foyan can read about those writers of colour and he can see himself in those books is very important because if we don't, we often talk about diversity in schools, right? But if, if we don't have diversity in terms of the things that we study in English, how will we ever have diverse English teachers? So we really invite your input. We would love to hear what you have to say about what you've heard. We're online, we're on, we've got websites for everything. We would love to hear from you. When I first saw the students were here, my, I thought, oh, is it, it's not going to be quite as slick or as smooth or something that I'm going to really get anything out of. But I was so moved about you know, how it was so genuine and honest that it got me to thinking about how possibly I could sort of mimic it for my own school. That came across that they hadn't handpicked the students, that the students had put themselves forward, and it gave it a feeling of genuineness that, you know, made it easier for me to sort of take that and see that it worked. 
I think that I wouldn't have any problem having students choose my classes, but I can specifically think of two or three members of my department where students wouldn't pick it, and I'd worry as well that those members of staff would be affected by the fact that they weren't picked. We get a very favourable response to our ideas when we share them with people, and at the same time they generally say one universal thing, and that is, we love this, but we could never do this. We say, why not? I wanted them to take away that our school's a good school and that what we do in the English department as a whole is, is excellent. This has not been easy. Within a state school institution, people dislike change. They, they are risk averse. And within the school, I have had to battle with people in order to get them to agree for us to go ahead with these programs and processes. They challenge the very fundamental nature of how schools work. Giving students and parents choice is terrifying for a lot of people in education. You've recorded yourselves speaking and you've transcribed those conversations. What I want to do now is start to identify as many as possible of these modifications to standard English that you've made in your conversations. How often do you use the word basic? When you're basically telling the story in a way. One more minute. What did you just say? Since we have such high stakes accountability in this country, if you are going to do something that is different from the norm, school leaders are always going to find it quite, um, quite threatening, particularly when the school leaders, they're accountable for the quality of your work. Our experience initially um, of Chris's performance when being observed by an Ofsted inspector was quite negative and that knocked his confidence quite a bit. If you get uh, an Ofsted inspector coming into your room, they will make judgments and those judgments can affect your career. The inspector came and looked at my teaching and defined my practice as inadequate. I guess there is the sense that a good lesson is a lesson where students are sitting behind desks, they are quiet, and they are studiously engaged in some kind of individual inquiry. My view is that they, they learn a lot in collaboration with each other. What other key people might call chaos, I would often just call active engagement. Over the years, as the results that we have achieved have come through the system and revealed themselves, the inspectors are much more amenable to the work we do, to the extent that the most recent visit from Ofsted ultimately gave us a very good uh, rating. We had to prove ourselves before we would be taken seriously. And I do think that if you're going to create change in the way that we have in a system like this, you have to have the courage to be willing to fail or to be seen to fail by others. And it's not just external agencies that we have to convince. Of course, we've also got to convince other professionals within the school. Not all professionals agree. They don't necessarily, although this model is working in English, it's not a model that everyone wants to adopt because it is a lot of work and it is a very different way of working um, from the way that many teachers who've been teaching for a long time are used to. got something of a choice about what you do today. The way that you've been planning for the raw data badge is planning your method and getting ready to actually do your experiments. Today you I am about to take over as head of science at LNS and I've been spending a lot of time working with the English department on the ideas that they've had. I have already started to trial it and the results were really fantastic. The, the evidence that I give uh, to like, try and 
prove that they are false. Yeah, exactly. You've made it refutable because you've cited your sources. So that they've we certainly enjoyed it and they've requested also, that it happens again. So this year, all of year seven, um, eight, nine and ten, so that's 11 to about the age of 15, are going to be choosing their science teachers next year. <laughs> Chaps on the third row, we're ready to begin. Every teacher in my department teaches differently. We each have different approaches and different classroom philosophies. From today, you have been given the chance to make a decision that is incredibly important to your success. The kids have been through this before. They've done it so many times. They know exactly what to expect. And my team are the people that are standing there for the first time selling themselves, which is something that's not really asked of you very much in teaching. We're used to being the ones that are very much in control in our room. You believe you're a more of an independent worker. You'll be best in my classroom. I really want to make it that we talk about these issues that are going on in the world right now, that we bring in a little more relevance. There's no room for nonsense. You have to be prepared to work hard. My team in the science department are uh, almost entirely new. More than half of my department have never taught here before. The turnover of staff in science departments in the UK at the moment is generally quite high and the reason for that is there's a real shortage of science teachers. The students that were there this morning have um, you know, seen a few teachers come and go at this stage and a couple of them have said, you know, what's the point in choosing your teacher if they're going to be leaving soon anyway? It saddens me, actually, that they have come to believe that, uh, that we might disappear on them and not be around to see the, the course through. I woke up this morning quite petrified actually because I mean the same feeling as many other people in the country, many other students my age, we're not sure what we're going to get. I mean this piece of paper with letters, it controls our lives basically. It's pretty exciting to be able to say that the results from this year's English programme at GCSE are the best we've ever had. The students that we teach fit into some of the categories nationally that are regarded as some of the least likely to achieve. We have students who come from backgrounds of poverty, we have students who come from backgrounds of uh, where their parents are migrants. We have students that come from difficult circumstances and given that that's the case and yet they come into this school and through their time here succeed at a level that is comparable and better than many other students with m much greater privilege in the country is something we, well, it, it's what gets us up in the morning. I've done very well, I passed English with two Bs, English Literature and Language, and I'll be studying it next year. I highly, highly recommend Mr O'Brien, he's one of the best teachers I've ever had. He's the one who pulled through on us. I was failing English in year 10, and he's the one who got me to, who got me to two Bs. When they feed their personality and their own thoughts into their lessons, that's when the lesson becomes great. I got uh, an A in Literature and a B in Language. Each student uh, is able to, like, sort of go on their own path of like discovery and exploration of the language or the text that we're studying. That really allows each, uh, each student to develop their own uh, ideas and that's probably why I did so good in English. Alice Burt has done fantastically well in English and I'm really, really proud of him. He got an A and a B in English and not only that, he's, he's also got a slight hurdle with um, dyslexia and the fact that he's got such amazing results is a credit to the English department. The great thing about Mr War is he spends time with you and he actually looks in depth at, at what your child needs. So you're the winner. So now go back to... There have been many examples over the years where I've felt frustrated because I don't think that the school supported me in the way that I'd like, which is typical for someone who's trying to do something different, I think. But at the same time, in the end, what we've got to show for what we've done speaks for itself. 